Over 20 years ago, we made this working garden. It's the powerhouse of the whole garden and I really love playing in it. We filmed us making it, must have been almost in the last century. So we're now gonna watch us building it and then we'll come back here and see how the space works today. One of the nicest and most satisfying parts of gardening, I think, is propagating and growing on your own young plants. Up to now, I've used my greenhouse, which I built out of salvage windows and reclaimed materials. And now I've built another one to match it out of similar things. Now I've got this fantastic space between the two and I'm really going to indulge myself and make my own mini nursery. This area is going to be really hard working, really practical, but I also want it to look really good too. So, on a cold October day, we started our transformation by clearing out the clutter. The potting bench was to be the working area's first main addition. But as the idea of this area was to save money, I was loath to splash out a fortune on materials. We simply used off-the-shelf pressure-treated softwood to knock together a very basic but practical design. Go get the rest of it. Now we've cleaned out that space, I'm amazed just how big it is. It was just stuffed full of old clutter that had accumulated over the years. And when it was opened out, I thought, wow, I can really put in something decent here. The potting bench will really utilize all that space. It will make sure everything is neat and tidy and highly workable. On the, side. the height of a potting bench should be based entirely on the height of the person who uses it most. In this case, I reckon 900 millimeters would be more than comfortable for my back. Yeah. Spot on fish. The workbench is coming together really nicely now. As you can see, there are a lot of old scaffold planks in it. These are really good for this sort of project because of the really tight health and safety rules. If there's just the slightest flaw in a scaffold plank, they have to bin it. And then you can pick it up either if you're really lucky for nothing, or sometimes you play a small charge, but they're really dirt cheap. There's a lot of pine weed here. Blood, Dave. Mm -hmm. Bang it in. With the main framework nearly completed, it was time to add some storage space underneath. Slatted roofing laths would ensure that any water would drain away. Important to help protect the wood, especially as we'd incorporated an outdoor tap into our design. This is the final piece in the jigsaw, my Belfast sink. It's very nice too. Mm, good find. Yeah. How much was it? 30 quid? It's not bad at all. Yeah, I mean, a nice one of this. It was in really good nick. Would cost quite a bit more, I think. But this is just slightly stained. Yeah, it's fine. But for my garden, I think that's fine. I don't mind the odd stain there. No, it's ideal. So we just need to sit that in onto those bearers and then cut the planks to go around it, make the draining board, and then we're done. Fantastic. Right, let's it. get it in then. You up to this? Yeah, go on. With the Belfast sink safely in place, all that was left to do was to add the worktops. It had been a long, hard day for everyone, but we had begun to make some real progress in transforming the area into my potting up paradise. And all my bench now needed was a lick of paint. I love these old planks, but I think they could look a whole load better. I'm going to try and make them look like old oak rather than cheap old pine. So I've got these wood stains. They're translucent stains. So they'll actually get sucked through into the wood and you'll see the grain of the wood through them, which is always really nice. And I've got here a light grey and an antique grey. And by mixing the two together, I'll get hopefully exactly the colour I want. What you want to be careful is when you're using an ordinary paint, it does actually dry darker. But with a wood stain, I find because it gets so sucked into the wood, it can dry a lot lighter. So just be aware of that. And when you put the first coat on, you can reassess it when it dries and then apply the second coat accordingly. So I'm going to tip one into the other, put the first coat on and see how it looks. This potting bench will soon be covered in compost, so you don't have to be too fussy with your strokes. And 
with the potting bench complete, it was time to move on to another vital addition to the nursery, a cold frame. Dave had built it from leftover building bricks, but clad the outside with stone offcuts to look smarter and provide extra insulation for my young plants. It was then a case of attaching the wooden framework to the top for the glass to sit on. Runners were added to allow the glass lids to slide in and out, giving me easy access to my plants inside. It's lovely. Brilliant job, Dave. Really nice. Now, my nursery would be open to plants all year. Next job was to get to grips with my boundary. Dave had laid a wavy path, broken up with fake ammonites or fossils, infilled with pea shingle. But, as well as being practical, I wanted this path to act as a key focal point and draw attention to my new boundary fence. This low see-through design still acts as a fence, but allows views of the field to seep into the garden, effectively borrowing the landscape from the neighbouring field. I'm really pleased to finally have a definitive border to my working area and I think the design looks suitably rural yet really smartens up the space. These gates are for aesthetic purposes only, we don't have any right of access here, but they form the focal point at the end of the path. I got a friend to make them up for me and I asked him to match the gates opposite, but unfortunately they didn't come out quite like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to alter them slightly. I'm going to take off the top rail and the rail behind, and then they'll match in with the rest of the fence beautifully. So high, Watch when I've got my hand on my hand, Dave. What's up is down, what's left is right. Chasing stars and holding you. Can't see the end, but we'll see it through it does get your arm muscles, doesn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. You wouldn't need to use a bulwark, I think. No, good exercise. Joinery, right? These simple alterations had made all the difference, and with the boundary defined, I was one step nearer to my potting up paradise. If you love plants, having a space in your own garden for propagating and training them is a really satisfying way to increase your stock. This unruly area of my garden was slowly being transformed into my own mini nursery. Next step was to put in some simple and inexpensive raised beds, which would soon become valuable hoarding areas. I'm going to plant up these beds with nice young topiary plants, small bushy little plants which I'll shape and clip up until I've got them just how I want them and then I'll move them out into the main garden. I'm also going to grow on young herbaceous plants here so when I can propagate them up and then when I've got the quantity I need then I can move them out. They're going to be really useful. The next stage is just to fit them into position. So bang in these pegs, keep them nice and firm and then Dave will fill them up with topsoil and then they're all ready to plant. The 10-inch stakes were simply driven into the corners of each bed and screwed into the side. There was no need to buy in topsoil, we just used the soil in the areas we'd excavated for gravel and paving. We then filled in the dugout areas with a layer of hardcore which once compacted forms a good hard working level base. And then it was just a case of adding the gravel to really smart up the area. With all the major construction work finally done the working area was certainly transforming into one of my favourite areas of the garden and someone was definitely making themselves at home. And it was now high time to introduce some plants. Wow. 
it's really nice to have these beds full of soil and to be actually planting them now. I've made quite a simple symmetrical layout. I've just put the four trees on the corner, something in the middle, and then any old things around the sides. But they're all plants that I'm growing on and I'm going to make look really choice. Things like this Viburnum tinus, which I found in a garden in the southwest. But some of my real favourites that I've got here are things like Ilex cronata convexa. And it is an Ilex, a holly, but it looks very like this box with this box shaped leaf. But it's got one huge advantage. People are getting really quite worried now about the box blight, the disease that box hedging is getting. It doesn't worry me too much because in my soil here, which is very free draining and dry, then it's very unlikely to get it. But in areas where I'm using them where it's wetter, I'm using Ilex granata convexa instead. I'm planting a yew hedge here. This is Taxus baccata. It's my favourite type of evergreen hedge. A lot of people don't like it because they say it's too slow, but in fact, if you water it during dry periods in the summer, it really does grow faster. It does hate wet soil, so in the winter, make sure that it doesn't become waterlogged or anything like that because it will really kill it off quicker than anything. This is going to be a very special type of yew hedge. It's not going to be a neat evenly heighted one at all. It's going to be a cloud prune hedge. And if you notice, we've got different size plants and we're going to cut them like that. So they bush out and it comes up and down and round and is bulbous. Not any flat right angles or surfaces in it whatsoever. And the other thing with yew hedges is you don't have to grow them quite tall. I have actually seen them maintained at only a foot high and they're really neat, smart edging hedges as well. After a couple of months of encouraging weather, the plant soon bedded in, and this area was now the working garden I'd always dreamed of. Well, I did make a few mistakes. I would never plant Ilex crenata again now. I know very few gardeners who can keep it alive for more than two or three years. I planted it in northern Japan and it works a treat. But in the UK, it just does not like it for some reason. So you can now see the yew hedge, the cloud pruned yew hedge has grown up really well and frames this view through to the full skates down there. Um, I've replaced the planting now with peonies. It's the peony walk and I really love it. I've also added two mistletoe trees, so the apple tree is impregnated with mistletoe at either end of the gate. And when they grow up, I think I'll remove these espalier apples. So we still have the four little raised beds. At the moment, I've got about a hundred cuttings of Bucks's heritage, which I've rooted and I'm growing on in here. Now, Bucks's heritage is a variety that is resistant to box blight. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm slowly phasing out all the box in my garden that's susceptible to the blight and replacing it with these lovely young cuttings. Now, there are well over 37 different cultivars of box, and some of them are naturally far more resistant to box blight than others. And so it might be that I don't have to take all of my box out, but probably the vast majority of them. Other things that have changed, well, I love raising my plants up um, and having my cuttings growing on a low table, really. I can just monitor them and see them better. And uh, they're out of rabbit's ways and things like that. So I just think they look nice and they get better monitored by me. I have actually changed the cold frame topping. The cold frame's the same, but instead of glass, I bought old glass Dutch lights from a guy in Spalding for 50p a frame years ago. And I've actually replaced the glass with ETFE. Now this is far better than polythene or glass. It lets the whole range of light spectrum through to the plants below. So they're far less stressed than they are even under glass. And at the moment, I've got some coriander growing on, which I'll use throughout the winter time. And I've got some winter lettuce, but sometimes I put tender plants in there, pelagoniums. I use it for so many different things. And I really wish I had another three more. 
I've put these lovely big pots in here just as markers for the corners and you can see I've got big courgettes growing in some. I've also got some alstroemeria growing on in the corner there. Now actually I did lift that alstroemeria and plant it elsewhere but I must have left a little bit and it's grown back like mad. Some people say it's difficult to divide but that one which is Indian summer which flowers from often March right through to December is an amazing performer. That one grows really vigorously. The one thing to know about Alstroemeria is you don't deadhead them, you just pull the dead shoots out. I'll show you how. So when they finish flowering, you don't deadhead them, you just pull them out like that and they come out naturally. Um, it is a truly amazing plant, this one. Um, I'm going to move it on somewhere else this winter. So that's this part of the working garden. Come and see the other end. This is the third part of my working garden and we've still got the sunken greenhouse which I love. It stays a lot more frost free than the ones above ground because it's below ground. I've got more plants raised up here behind me and then I've got the beehives at the far end just sectioned off a bit now. Here I tend to grow vegetables sometimes as well so over here I've got some mange too which I love. Now I went away and didn't water them for a few days and so you can see they've got this powdery mildew on them which is usually a sign of drought but I've just given them a squirt with SB Invigorator. It's wonderful stuff, it's meant for insect pests um, and it's very mild, it's organic, it's just like a sticky substance that you spray onto the leaf but it does work really well for powdery mildew too. So that will soon go, but you, I will need to apply it frequently because it has been pretty hot and dry. So you can see this is just a perfect little area for growing plants on and tending plants. Now this space I realize is bigger than some people's whole garden, but even if I had a teeny weeny garden, I think I still would have a place for a small hoarding border where I could grow my plants on and pots and things like that. It's just lovely. If you love playing with plants, then this is an ideal type of garden.